This series of videos concerns embedded systems design and programming and how to do it with excellence, whether you are new to the discipline or a veteran. There's a corresponding series of articles available at aqdi.com. This video is about raw programmer productivity. Do you understand what I mean by programmer productivity? If it takes you 10 hours to write a program and the geek in the cubicle next to you takes 5 hours and the programs and results are the same, you had better be updating your resume or working on your PhD. A productive programmer spends the minimum amount of time and money writing, debugging, documenting, and deploying a program and diagnosing problems in the field. The first productivity block you need to examine is the tool set you use. Most of us use the IDEs, that is, Integrated Development Environments, that come from the manufacturer of the chip or system we are using. I have licensed IDEs installed from Microchip, Atmel, Cypress, Motorola, IAR, Hitech, and on and on. About a dozen of them total. And there are multiple versions of some, for example, Microchip's MP Lab. I have customers who insist on sending me MP Lab project files, which I must open, so I have to keep old versions of MP Lab hanging about because they're not always compatible. Each of these IDEs is different and clunky and hideous in its own way. Every one of them appears to have been written by graduate co-op students on summer break with cool menu features and windows that have no useful function. There's zero interoperability between these IDEs, though some IDEs can be configured to call competitive compilers if you have 10 hours to spare. These IDEs have different user interfaces, differing debugging capabilities, varying command structures, different function and hotkeys, and disparate feature sets. They're all touted as the best. And the editors in these IDEs are generally lame, not concentrating on productivity, but rather on cartoonish contextual coding of source code. Using these IDEs is a challenge because they do not work consistently. Most IDEs and emulators I have used have such quirky behavior that one must resort to a randomly determined procedure to get them to work at all. It's kind of like a Monte Carlo emulation user approach, where you try this and try that until you find the magic combination of commands and or activities and get your project moving. To that end, I've created a useful tool. It's a spinner device, similar to what you find in board games. Next time you're befuddled by a poorly tested IDE, print this out, stick a bent up paper clip in the center as a spinner. Soon you'll have the answer to your problem. If you were raised on this junk, you might feel that this is normal, but it is not. These IDEs help young programmers, perhaps, but after you complete your first program, all they do is slow you down. As an employer, when I hire a programmer, I expect to see their hands on the keyboard, feet on the floor, eyes on the screen, hammering out code, documenting, and debugging. When I see a hand on a mouse, I bite my tongue and watch the dollars twirl down the drain. The first programming productivity tool you need is a good programming editor. For years I used Brief only because it was totally configurable. It's not available now. Many programmers use VI or Vim. Such editors and others are optimized for programming, not word processing. They're not based on some Microsoft edit component. They're fast and lean with macro capability that makes repetitive programming tasks easy. If you're spending time positioning that razor thin carrot between lowercase l's in your program, you're wasting time. Learn how to program without using a mouse and your productivity will double. If you program without using macros, you're also wasting time. Using macros, you can cut and paste a listing of pin functions from a data sheet and programmatically transform the list into a compilable set of definitions in a header file. All that manual typing would take literally hours and I've seen programmers do just that. Some windowing editors and IDEs have macro capability, but the mix of keyboard and mouse activity confounds many macro recorders. Be careful when selecting an editor to be sure you get one with a good macro capability. You might ask, if the usability of IDEs is so poor, how does one find bugs? Well, sometimes I do use IDEs to find bugs by single-stepping and examining variable values, but not often. In most cases, the IDE is good for loading and starting a program on the target. Many bugs are obvious after examining source code and the source documents, such as state machines. You won't find me spending hours and hours stepping through code trying to determine what's happening because I already emulated the entire program thoroughly with my brain. Programming is not a job or an art, it's a discipline. Most compilers allow use from the command line. 
I generally use my favorite programming editor, then run the compiler from a make file from the command line. It generally runs faster than from within the IDE. Additionally, many IDEs pass a multitude of options to the compiler, and there's precious little way to know what the IDE is telling the compiler to do. On a recent job, I watched as an engineer in another company spent two solid days trying to get a compiler slash IDE configured correctly to program a PIC micro so that it would run with a proper memory space setup. When I was handed the project, I quickly created a make file which called the compiler directly, avoiding all that foolishness. Given the propensity for vendors to update IDEs and kill any project compatibility, it only makes sense to have a make-based compile link capability for your projects. After you're hit by a truck on the way to work, your successor will quickly understand all she has to do is type make and press enter to rebuild your hugely overcomplicated and feature-rich program. Another productivity enhancer is writing programs that code for you. For example, a recent project needed me to squeeze a 7500 element database into a tiny embedded OTP micro. The data was musical in nature and an extension to a similar 4000 element database which contained some known errors. And while there were some patterns to the data, there were exceptions as well. I could have created the database by hand, but that would have taken months. I instead wrote a program to algorithmically generate the new and check the old and new data. The program took several days to write, but updates to the database are almost instantaneous. That program also generated C source code containing all the definitions and static data declarations. When the customer asked for modifications, I edited the generator program and ran it again, having confidence that the entire output was checked for errors and internal consistency. I've also written programs that determine data tables quickly. Those programs can easily print source code for direct inclusion at compile time in header files. Using a spreadsheet to create data also works, but then you need to write a macro to massage that information in the source form. Remember, embedded programming is about economically creating working functional products in a reasonable amount of time. It's not about syntax coloring, configurable IDEs, glitzy windowing systems, or XML. Collect a set of tools that will allow you to be productive. Our next video concerns myths.